Hey guys, Adam Young from Sentinel 3D Scanning here, and today we're going to be talking about Coordinate Measuring Machines, or CMMs for short. More specifically, we're going to be talking about what you should consider when purchasing a CMM. So if you're thinking about buying a CMM for your shop, then keep watching. Now, if you frequent Practical Machinist Metrology subform, you will regularly see posts asking for recommendations about CMM hardware and for CMM software. Unfortunately, it is tough to recommend a specific system because every user has different needs. So in this video, I'll just give you some things to think about. And just to set some ground rules for this video, I will only be discussing traditional CMMs and traditional optical CMMs. There are a lot of other CMM-like measurement tools out there, but this video would be way too long if I focused on every type of inspection tool capable of measuring 3D coordinates. Let's get started. The first thing I would consider when purchasing a CMM is what type of sensors you will need. Although most probably think of tactile probes when they think about CMMs, manufacturers actually offer a wide variety of sensors that can be mounted on CMMs. Starting off with sensors that contact the part, or tactile sensors, we have touch trigger probes. These probes measure single points when the stylus tip contacts the part. A couple examples are Renishaw TP20 and TP200 probes. Scanning probes also measure single points by coming into contact with the part, but are also capable of dragging a stylus across the surfaces in order to measure points continuously. This can significantly speed up the measurement process. The third tactile measurement method I'll mention is roughness measurement sensors. These sensors mount onto the CMM's probe head and enable your CMM to collect roughness measurements during the measurement program. Under the non-contact umbrella, we have vision, and what I will call 1D non-contact and 2D non-contact sensors. Vision sensors are basically cameras with some fancy lights attached to them that can be used to measure parts visually. These sensors are well suited for measuring flat, non-rigid, or highly detailed parts. One-dimensional non-contact sensors measure single points at a time and come in several different flavors. Lasers, interferometers, and chromatic confocal sensors are common measurement technologies used for these types of sensors. 2D non-contact sensors measure a line of points at a specified frequency while the CMM is moving, basically turning your CMM into a 3D scanner. Laser triangulation technology is typically used in these sensors. The type of sensors you will need on your CMM will depend on what you're measuring, so make sure to research how each of these sensors work and what they are capable of. Now that you have decided what type of sensors you will need to inspect your parts, it's time to choose which sensors you will use the most. This will help you decide whether to buy a touch-based system or a vision-based system. Touch-based systems are called CMMs, or multi-sensor CMMs if coming with additional sensor types. These systems are typically recognized by their granite stages and tactile probes. Vision-based CMMs are called a variety of names, which include vision measuring machines, video measuring systems, video measurement systems, optical CMMs, multi-sensor measuring machines, and multi-sensor measurement systems. Probably a few other names as well. And maybe someday all the manufacturers will agree on a name. But whatever these systems are called, they prioritize the capabilities of the camera and lighting. This means that a glass stage is used in place of a granite stage so that backlighting can be used to light up the part from behind. It also means that the camera will be this primary sensor type, while tactile sensors are typically more of an add-on. If you're going to be measuring a lot of flat or non-rigid parts, you might want to go for a vision-based system. Otherwise, just go for a touch-based CMM. The next decision I would make is whether you need a manual or a DCC CMM. Manual CMMs are exactly what they sound like. They are CMMs that are moved manually by an operator to collect measurement data. DCC, or Direct Computer Controlled CMMs, on the other hand, feature motorized axes and are automatically moved using a joystick or commands from the software. The only situation I can think of where I would personally recommend a manual CMM is if you plan to use it sparingly, and only to measure a couple of parts. If you're measuring more than a few parts, 
writing a measurement program for a DCC CMM will end up being a lot more efficient in the long run. Something you will notice when you're shopping for CMMs is that the measuring volume of the system is typically included in the name. For example, Mitotoyo Krista Apex V776, Zeiss O-Inspect 543, and Hexagon Global Touch 775. As you can see, the numbers in all of these names correspond with the volumes that can be measured by these systems. I would recommend purchasing a CMM with a larger measuring volume than you think you need. For instance, if you're thinking you need a 500 mm square measuring volume, consider purchasing a 750 mm square measuring volume instead. Once you begin using the system, you will probably be glad that you did. One reason for this is because the sensors you select may limit the effective measuring volume of your system. Let's say that you are purchasing a CMM with a Renishaw PH10 articulating probe head. When the probe head is rotated 90 degrees, the measuring volume in X and or Y will be limited more than it was when it was completely vertical, especially if you are using a long stylus. Another measuring volume limiter are probe racks. This common accessory makes stylus and module changes much easier, but will permanently consume some of your machine's measuring volume. One of the nice things about shopping for a CMM is that accuracy specifications are usually readily available. These accuracy specifications are typically specified in terms of some base number plus some additional inaccuracy that depends on the size of the dimension being measured. The larger the measurement, the larger the inaccuracy. In my experience, these accuracy specifications tend to be what is possible under ideal circumstances. As an example, the specification may hold true if you're using a high magnification, but if you switch to a lower magnification, the accuracy may be a bit worse. Because of this, make sure to perform gauge R&Rs and accuracy checks on your system so that you fully understand the ins and outs of its capabilities. If you've already made decisions on all of the considerations we've discussed thus far, then it's possible that the decision of software has already been made for you. But if the hardware you've chosen hasn't limited your software choices, this is a decision you should not take lightly. As I've discussed in a previous video, you need to choose software for both data acquisition and data analysis. In both categories, you can go with first-party software from the manufacturer or third-party software from another company. For creating and running inspection programs, you will need acquisition software. It may be a better decision to go with first-party software for these tasks, especially if you have some additional sensors installed on the machine. Third-party software may offer a better, more intuitive workflow and the ability to only use one software across many different brands of machines, but it may not work with certain sensors. For evaluating GD&T and generating reports, you will need analysis software. One option is to use your acquisition software to do this, but in general, third-party applications do tend to provide better reporting capabilities. Also, if you took my advice from earlier on in the video, Hopefully you have spent a considerable amount of time using the machine by the time you're finalizing your software decision. If your machine's hardware was great, but the software not so much, then check out some of the third-party offerings to see if you like them better. Let's talk about accessories. For CMMs, there are a few options you will want to consider. First, it is unlikely that you will be able to inspect all of your parts with one type of stylus. If this is the case, and it probably is, it's a good idea to purchase a probe rack with your CMM to store all of your styli. This will enable you to perform automated tool changes during your automated inspections. If you're churning out lots of parts fast and you don't want to take the time to let your parts soak, you may also want to purchase temperature compensation. This feature comes with thermocouples, attached to wires, which you can then attach to your part to record its temperature during the inspection. Then the software uses the recorded temperature to correct the measured data as if your part had been measured at 20 degrees Celsius. And the last accessory I will talk about in this video is universal fixturing. This is an accessory you can purchase from a third party later, 
but it is so important that I wanted to mention it here. Universal fixturing will make fixturing your parts to your CMM much easier and can save you a lot of time once you understand how it works. Now that you know exactly what you want to buy, it's time to figure out if you can afford it. If so, you can move forward with your purchase. If not, you will need to start making compromises. But what cost should you consider? Here are the ones I would dig up. 1. Environmental costs. Do you have enough space for your CMM? Can your lab or shop meet the temperature and humidity requirements? Do you need to install an air compressor? 2. Cost of the CMM. Can you cover the full cost of this machine? Make sure to include shipping, installation, accessories, and training costs. 3. Hardware maintenance agreement. Many CMM manufacturers now offer hardware maintenance agreements. These agreements are intended to cover the cost of some repairs and yearly preventative maintenance. 4. Software maintenance agreements. These agreements typically provide you with free software updates and better customer support. And 5. Routine calibrations. In addition to preventative maintenance, a separate cost may be required to calibrate your CMM. So those are all of the major considerations I would think about when purchasing a new CMM. If you zoned out for most of the video, let me simplify it all into just two points. One, understand all of the related costs, including initial costs, training, yearly costs, everything. And two, try it for yourself. Do not, and I repeat, do not buy a machine based on a demo. Fly to the manufacturer, bring your own parts, and inspect the parts yourself using one of their demo machines. I've gone through four days of training on a CMM, thinking that the system looked pretty good, only to be disappointed once training was over and I started inspecting parts on my own. Appearances can be deceiving. If you don't want to buy a CMM but still want to inspect your parts, perhaps you should consider outsourcing. Sentinel 3D Scanning offers accurate part inspection with fast turnaround times. Send us your parts, let us inspect them for you, all while you get back to doing something more important, like making parts. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video, and happy CMM shopping!